surviving infidelity. I warned her. My ex, 29 female, and I, 29 male, met in college in 2013, I was 23 and she was 22. We became fast friends and eventually we developed feelings for each other and became a couple a year later, it was a great relationship and I don't regret it. Fast forward to 2016, I was home, when she called me saying she was outside and that we needed to talk. So I went outside, and I saw that she was crying in her car. I went up to her and asked what's wrong. She confessed that she cheated on me. I don't want to go into details because I'm trying to keep this short. I was shocked, hurt, and I teared up. She went on saying that we needed to break up because I deserved better than her, and that she developed feelings for the other guy. I warned her about rushing it with someone else, and that a relationship that begins by cheating usually ends badly. After we finished talking, I walked back to my house, but before I went in, I turned around to see her one more time, and she was still crying. Once I went inside, she posted on social media saying, I wish I could just disappear with a crying emoji. I proceeded to remove her from social media after that. As I was mourning the end of my relationship, I also thought about how her new relationship will blow up in her face. Fast forward two years later, she messages me asking me to meet up because she wanted to talk. I knew the day had arrived. So I met her at diner, I live in New Jersey, and she was miserable, she looked like she was crying before we met up. When she saw me, she gave a weak eye and I gave her a cold one. This surprised her and got teary eyed. I started by asking her what she wanted to talk about. She started saying that her and the affair partner broke up two weeks ago, and admitted that the relationship with him was horrible. It turns out he was a narcissist, who emotionally abused her. She also admitted that the guilt of what she did to me never went away, and that I was right. She then noticed my emotionless expression and turned away saying, you used to be so happy and silly. It hurts seeing you like this, and I know it's my fault because of my bad, selfish, and dumb decisions. She went to say I'm sorry for everything, I thought about you every day for the past two years. She then said not only did I ruin us, but I lost my best friend, you were my best friend and I ruined that. She started crying again saying I'm not here to get back together because I don't deserve that, and I have no right to ask that. I proceeded to say that, it's true you that don't deserve me. It gets quiet and she turned away again. She then said that she missed me and that she missed me for two years, then she asked me to be friends again. I told her I can promise anything. She starts crying for the final time and I left the diner. As I was walking out, I turn over and she's still crying, how history repeats itself. In the end cheating ruins the cheater and the victim. Never cheat. It's usually never worth it. Thanks for reading. Now for the top comments. That is the thing that the cheater can never understand. She went on saying that we needed to break up because I deserved better than me, and that she developed feelings for the other guy. I warned her about rushing it with someone else, and that a relationship that begins by cheating usually ends badly. She was right. You did deserve better. And even after you broke up with her, you told her that it would likely end badly. The thing that gets me is, two years later she decides to value your friendship? What friendship is there of any value? I have friends on Facebook that have shown me more consideration than this person has to you. Consequences suck, but they are all on her and by her choices. Do you think she is remorseful? Also, I forgot to say she broke up with me, sorry for not making that clear. Don't do it, don't go there. You were right and there is no going back. You were right. Reminds me of my story. He cheated on me with his ex that cheated on him, and then left me to go with her. It was hard and for a while I felt worthless, but she ended up not caring for him at all. It didn't feel good for me at all, but I just knew I was right. Cheating never goes right and it always blows up in your face. You can't escape karma, and what you put out into the universe will always come back to you, good or bad. I'm sorry that happened, no one wins with cheating. What really sucks for her, is not only did she blow her relationship with you, she probably exhausted herself trying to make her relationship with a fair partner work. What's amazing to me is how much a wayward spouse will pour into a relationship with AP, to prove to themselves that leaving the betrayed spouse was the right thing to do, as evidenced by her new and great relationship with the one. What's really amazing, is that she actually hoped you would be waiting for her to stroll back into your life, and come and take the pain of this new breakup away. The audacity of some people. Now for the next story. Update, divorced finally, and a fair partner's parents called me. Original post. I made another post on a different sub. Going through the comments, someone recommended here. 
I don't know if I'm ranting or what, but here it is. D-Day was a year ago today. I found nudes between him and his now girlfriend in our shared email. We've been separated since. I just moved into a new place with my kids after living with my parents for so long. Divorce is still pending and it's been hell, but that's not what this is about. Basically, after a lot of meetings between our lawyers, it's gotten to the conclusion once we are divorced, we will be selling our house. I know he's not happy about it since he had just moved his new girlfriend in there and was ready to play house. Anyways. I met her for the first time, I went over to the old house to get the last of my kids things. I guess they wanted to tell me as a couple, that I will be having full custody because they'll be moving back to my husband's hometown in March. He'll agree to whatever the child support is. It's the least he could do for me. Gee thanks. I rolled my eyes hard because I'm supposed to be thankful that my husband is running away to another town with his 20 year old girlfriend, and he's leaving me with two kids but he'll pay child support. Whatever. I kept it neutral and took the bag of things and left. I thought I'd cry or scream, or do something. I just felt numb, I guess. Maybe relieved I'll never have to see him around, but I do feel bad for my kids. My son wants to see his dad, and he didn't even call for my daughter's birthday on Monday. He doesn't care and maybe it's for the best that he's out of sight and out of mind if he's going to throw us to the side for this girl. Can't believe he turned out to be such a jerk. Now for the top comments before reading the update. His AP is a moron if she thinks she won a prize in a man who would abandon his kids for young tail. Give it 5 years. She'll get Wittersend. I keep getting older, but the girls stay the same age man. Alright alright alright. What a heartless piece of narcissistic crap. You're better off without him, but your kids will need extra support. Have him pay for their therapy on top of child support? Yep this. Make sure the least he could do is saving money for their college, therapy, and child support. He is very much just that. Like, oh yeah, you get full custody. Congrats I'm abandoning little people who would have needed me if I didn't prove to be such a vile crappy person. Never trust a person that will willingly abandon their own children. If he can't even show loyalty or attachment to his own children, he won't be able to commit to his affair partner for very long either. If you get full custody, make sure you get that in writing. When his relationship falls apart, he may try to weasel back into their lives. My aunt made this mistake. They thought it was a good sign, because he'll be focused in his new family. They didn't cheat though, he was divorced when they met, but he didn't visit or care about his children at all. She thought this was good. Fast forward 7 to 8 years, he doesn't give a damn about the children with her and they are separated. And now for the update. I'd like to thank all of you for the support I got on that post. I'm glad to know I'm not alone here. I can't believe it was 18 days ago, because it's honestly felt like years since then. I felt this update was worth a post, and I could vent a bit so why not. I am officially divorced as of the 25th. I guess he decided to stop keeping a strong hold on certain items and agreed to compromise so he can move on with his girlfriend. It's agreed I will get full custody while he'll pay child support. It was pretty rough hearing it, and confirming that he has so little desire to be a father to our kids, and is doing the bare minimum just because the court says so. I guess for me, I feel at least relived it's done with and I can move on fully. My son is very upset, and has been asking if he did anything wrong to make his dad leave. I've done my best to assure him that he did nothing wrong, and he's been the best son I could ask for. Luckily, we start family therapy next Monday, so I can get some better guidance and understand on how to help my kids moving forward. I guess this is the juicer part of the post. Like I mentioned before, my ex's girlfriend slash affair partner was from our church. Her parents also attend our church. I guess they got my phone number from someone in the community. They called me to say they're sorry for what their daughter did and got herself involved in. They're very embarrassed because they raised her better than this, and if I need anything, I can always ask them. They're also worried for her because she's so young and is moving so fast with my ex. They're already talking about marriage and having kids. She's not even legal to drink yet. I basically told them what's done is done and I appreciated their call, as well as wishing them good luck with their daughter and my ex. Thinking about the call now is making me giggle to be honest. My former in-laws are a different story. From social media. I can tell my ex-brother-in-law is over the moon about my ex and his girlfriend. I haven't spoken my ex-mother-in-law or father-in-law at all. They never liked me much, and I wouldn't expect them to try to be in my kids' lives. The family is tight-knit that it'd be seen like a betrayal probably. Anyways, that's it I guess. I don't know what's next for me as a person. 
I'm just looking to getting through this pandemic with my head on straight, which shouldn't be too hard if I survived this divorce that I swore would kill me months ago. If I could ask for any advice, I guess it would be for what comes next. What now? Now for some top advice. My son is very upset and has been asking if he did anything wrong to make his dad leave. This is truly heartbreaking. The innocents are hurt the most. Good for you to arrange counseling for kids. Take care. I have to sit down and have the talk with my six-year-old in the next couple of weeks with her therapist as well. I'm so terrified of her internalizing it like that. That line made me tear up OP. I feel your pain on this one. There is no easy way to have these conversations, and no way to make it easier for them. It's a tunnel that their little train just has to chug through, but we can help with hugs, cuddles, and as many reassurances as we can possibly give them. Eventually, they will come through on the other side into the sunlight. Or starlight. The only reason you ex-brother-in-law is over the moon about it, is because she's young and he thinks you ex is cool for being with a teenager. It's sad really. I don't understand how someone could do that. If one of my brothers cheats on their wives and, even worse, abandons their children, I want them disowned. They, my brothers and their freaking mistresses, shall never ever show their freaking face to me and my parents ever again. I see it the cancer cut itself out and you get money from the operation. Now you can improve the lives of your kids while he can go to hell for anyone cares. Proud of you for doing what you had to and holding it together. Wonderful mom any man with an iota of common sense will see that incredible potential in. Wish you the best of luck. Now for the last story. How do I properly end it with my wife while we're trying for a child? Male 32, female 31. We've been married for 9 years. We married way too young and really quickly. Out of 9 of those years, I've been unhappy for around 3. When I finally shared how I felt, we decided to take marriage counseling. We were advised to do something that would make both of us satisfied and happy in our relationship. She had been wanting a kid for a while and I had been open to the idea, so we've been trying a lot around her ovulation period. Intercourse has come to the point where it feels like a char I have to complete three times a month. Last time we did it was in November, and she wanted to start trying again this week. I know this is something she desperately wants and I'm very open to having a child, just not with her. I've tried to leave in the past, around two years ago. It wasn't pretty, and she broke down and begged me to stay. I think it's unfair to the both of us if I keep trying, and going to counseling if I know we're at a dead end. There's always something that's happening that backtracks my design. A birthday, holiday, milestone, always something. Our 10th anniversary is next month on Valentine's Day. I know, very cliché. I don't want to end it before because we've been talking for years about this day, but I don't want to do it after because I will feel like a fraud. I love her, but I am no longer in love with her. All of our conversations and emotions are dead. Neither person has done anything to each other that was cruel or anything like that. I just feel like counseling isn't working and that this marriage is over. I can just imagine how she will try to get me to stay, and it sucks because she's really trying for a child and desperately wants one right now. Now for the top advice. We were advised to do something that would make both of us satisfied and happy in our relationship. She had been wanting a kid for a while. Oh good God. Stop having intercourse with her and end it today. Our relationship sucks, let's have a baby, is the worst idea ever and always. Always makes things worse to the point where it's a common trope. Are you completely unaware of that? Or did you just think that your relationship was different? Saw this with close friends. Sadly, the one that will suffer the most will be the kid. Speaking as the kid, I can confirm this is true. I had a best case scenario where they realized their mistake, and proceeded with the divorce before I was even born. However, spending your entire life being the only reason two people that hate each other can't fully move on, sucks. You do it today. Please do not keep having X with her, and risk bringing a child into the world this way. Pack your things. Stop reading responses. She deserves all the time you can give her to start over. Agreed. Do it ASAP and stop having intercourse. I think you both took something the therapist said and ran way too far out the ballpark with it, ha ha. They likely meant something like date night to reconnect, not having a baby. I can't imagine any therapist thinking a baby will fix a failing relationship. It never does. It just makes people feel even more trapped, and it doesn't magically fix everything. It would make it 10 times harder when it's already not working because of all the stress. You two should go on and have babies and be happy, just not with each other. You are young enough to start again with the right person. 
People change a ton from 20 to 30, so don't be hard on yourself. I've been in your situation too and I'm glad I made that call. I've tried to leave in the past, around 2 years ago. It was pretty and she broke down and begged me to stay. I think it's unfair to the both of us if I keep trying and going to counseling if I know we're at a dead end. There's always something that's happening that backtracks my design. A birthday, holiday, milestone, always something. Our 10th anniversary is next month on Valentine's Day, I know, very cliché. I don't want to end it before because we've been talking for years about this day, but I don't want to do it after because I will feel like a fraud. These aren't the real reasons. These are the excuses you make to postpone what you are scared of doing. Go to a lawyer as soon as possible. Get the process started. Stop making excuses so you don't have to actually do something. And stop sleeping with your wife before you completely mess up your life. I'm honestly scared. It's something I've tried to do again and again, but I lose courage and have to build up that confidence once more. I stopped sleeping with her in November, she's only recently brought up intimacy this week. Thank you for the advice. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.